New this morning, one person was hurt after a car motorcycle crashed on the 12th Avenue North Viaduct near NDSU in Fargo overnight. Police tell Valley News Live that a woman driving the motorcycle was having mechanical issues, which caused her lights to fail. She was pulling over to the side of the road and slowing down when she was rear-ended by a car. The woman on the motorcycle was rushed to the hospital, but there's no word yet on the extent of her injuries. The driver of the car was not hurt. The 12th Avenue North Bridge was blocked for a time around 2 this morning as first responders worked to clear the area. Also new this morning, Minnesota State Troopers say alcohol was a factor in a U-turn that turned deadly down by the Twin Cities. The state patrol says a 23-year-old man was turning around on Highway 5 in the town of Victoria in Carver County yesterday afternoon when he was hit by a pickup coming up from behind him. The driver of the car that was hit died. The pickup driver had minor injuries. Troopers say the driver of that pickup had been drinking. And we're following some breaking news this morning out of Moorhead, where police spent more than an hour earlier today searching a neighborhood after reports of a fight in the street. Officers were on high alert because there were initial reports of possibly weapons being involved. The Valley Today's Callie Harbor joins us live from that area with an update on this breaking news. Good morning, Callie. Hi, good morning, Lisa and Jordan. Yeah, there was a very heavy police presence out here in Moorhead just after three this morning on Main Avenue. There was a call for a disturbance that came in just after three this morning uh, and several police cars were outside of these homes. You'd never be able to tell. It's pretty quiet out here, but I want you to take a look at this video. We got close up video of police talking to someone outside and we also saw a woman and a child walking behind these homes. Now, police were blocking traffic from FM Ambulance on Main Avenue to 16th Street South for over an hour. And just to give you a perspective, we're right across the street from J.C. Chumley's in Moorhead. Dispatch told me this morning that there was no threat to the public. We saw two uh, police cruisers going by these houses on 16th Street South here just a little bit ago. We're not exactly sure why we did see one of the individuals get out of the car, um, but I just called dispatch a little bit ago and left a message with them, um, and the sergeant on duty with Moorhead Police should be getting back to us and giving us more information as the morning goes on. And our photographer, who was on scene at the time as well, said they heard police yelling, come out with your hands up to whomever was in that house. So, yeah, we'll keep following this here on the Valley today and throughout the day on the VNL News app. The Valley News Live First Alert Storm Team has issued a weather alert day. Good morning. It is going to be an active day today. We're starting with heat and humidity for many places in the valley and wind too, of course. It seems like lately that's all we've been dealing with every single day, but also the chance for some rain and thunder. And we've been seeing that here this morning in the Devil's Lake area. And this is our view on the home of economy sky cam there. And you can see the cloud cover, the darker skies here as we're starting off today. And as we take a look at your radar, you can see there's a broken line of showers. It's really been diminishing overnight after some thunderstorms last Last night there. Uh, this is the boundary that the storms will fire on later today, this afternoon and tonight. So this is where I'll be watching for the potential for severe weather to start. And then as this starts to finally move eastward, a uh, spread east through the rest of the valley. So uh, that will be the focus for this. Right now, these showers are very light in uh, eastern parts of Ramsey County, back over into Nelson County, a little more substantial shower in northwestern Griggs and back over into Studsman County right now. That's where we'll likely have more cloud cover today with that boundary just basically being stationary all day. The rest of us, lots of sun. We're going to heat up. We're already warm at 74 in Fargo, at 74 in Grand Forks as well. And as we take a look at our winds coming in out of the south, those will be increasing. We've got some gusts into the 20s to near 30 miles per hour right now. So by the afternoon, heat back into the upper 80s and low, maybe even some mid 90s again today with windy conditions to those gusts to 40 miles per hour out of the south. And around that five o'clock hour, that's when we may start to see those storms popping and that will continue especially this evening and even overnight tonight with that threat for some severe weather. So here's a look at that risk today. We're looking at Grand Forks, Fargo, everywhere in yellow included in a slight risk. That's where the greater threat happens to be along that boundary as it moves from west to east tonight. And the potential is greatest for large hail up to two inches, high winds up to about 75 miles per hour. Can't rule out an isolated tornado, especially as these storms are initiating here this afternoon and tonight. 
night. And then localized flooding, too. Some of these storms may pass one after another over some of the same areas, and that could lead to some uh, flooding here. So we're going to watch out for this tonight. Want to make sure that you've got your Valley News Live First Alert Storm Team app ready to go and updated to alert you where you happen to be, especially as you're trying to sleep tonight. As we head into the end of the week and the weekend, the wind eases up and we cool down. Let's check in now with the Valley Today's Devin Fry with Traffic on the Move. Thanks, Lisa. We're finishing up our morning drive here on I-94. Now, we spent the majority of our morning in Moorhead, kind of checking out the traffic flow over there, seeing how things are going across the Red River. And overall, the majority of the roadways that we've seen this morning are light. Everything is looking pretty light out there thus far. Now, it's starting to build up a little bit out here on the interstate. So you can see that it's much busier than it was when we first got out here on the roadways, but it's still not causing any delays. Everything's moving really freely. There's a lot of room around the vehicles, as you can see in front of me. Uh, so while both sides are equally looking like they are building up, it's not like it's creating any delays. Everything should be moving smoothly there. And this looked like a very similar situation on I-29. The only area where things were getting kind of hung up on I-29 was the reduced speed zone from 17th Avenue to 32nd Avenue in both lanes there. It's reduced to 40 miles an hour, so watch out for that spot. We're going to keep checking out the roadways, but for now, for your traffic on the move, I'm Devin Fry. Authorities in Candy Yohai County, Minnesota are asking for your help in finding an 83-year-old man with dementia. Donald Weaverdink went missing yesterday afternoon while out for a bike ride in Spicer. The sheriff's office says he is known to regularly take bike rides that, that are several miles long at a time. Weaverdink was last seen wearing a blue shirt, tan shorts, and a black bicycle helmet and was riding his red giant brand bicycle. Anyone with information on where he could be is urged to call the Candy Yohai Sheriff's Office. Safety experts are urging caution after two grain bin fatalities in North Dakota over just the past week. The latest was a man in his 50s in Walsh County on Monday afternoon. Last Wednesday, a 56-year-old woman from Montpelier died at a farm in Stutzman County. It's recommended that you wear the proper restraints and never go into a grain bin alone and have somebody nearby. And if you don't have to go into the grain bin, you shouldn't. A Sunday night fire totaled a home in Enderlin, North Dakota, and with it, the belongings of one woman's two late children. Investigators blame the fire on electrical issues. Sean Jackson says this is the second time she's lived in this home, and it will always hold a special place in her heart. Right after my son, I lost my daughter to suicide. <laughs> and this was the last place I seen both of them alive, was in this house. Jackson was able to save both her children's urns. We have a link to a GoFundMe account to help the family. You can find more information on that by going to our Valley News Live news app and clicking on this story. Four more mass COVID-19 testing events are scheduled for Fargo over the next two weeks. Outdoor drive-up testing will take place in the west parking lot of the Fargo Dome from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. tomorrow and Friday and again next Thursday and Friday. The tests are free. Proof of residency is not required. Tests are for people aged 12 and up. Governor Tim Walz says the Minnesota Zoo is on the brink of closure without help that's been requested as part of his bonding bill during the special session. The zoo depends on two-thirds of its total budget from gate fees and donations, which were lost due to COVID-19 closures. Zoo officials say they have used all of their reserve, and by the end of June, they'll have depleted all the resources. A House Finance Committee is pitching the idea of $6 million in funding to support the zoo. The museum inside the Umcombe Center in downtown Moorhead has reopened with updated hours and safety guidelines. It's been closed for three months due to the coronavirus. The museum will be open every day from noon to 5. Visitors will be required to wear a mask and maintain social distancing. The Fargo-Moorhead Redhawks formally introduced interim manager Chris Coast yesterday. The World Series champion says while winning is always the top priority, he wants fans to leave with a smile, win or lose, and that means allowing guys to embrace their personalities on the field. The Red Hawks open the season July 3rd against Winnipeg. It will be the first of 42 home games for the Red Hawks this summer. The Red Hawks will have safety precautions in place to make Newman Outdoor Field safe for everyone who goes there. Let's get our answer now to our question of the morning on Facebook. Today's question, according to a new survey, a third of newlyweds say this is what they miss the most from their single days. The answer is having their own bathroom. 
Remember, you can play along every day. Just head to the Valley News Live Facebook page, and that's where you'll find the question and the answer. Here on the Valley Today, we want to thank you for tuning in to watch our coverage. We want to reassure you that we're working hard to make sure you're staying informed during this COVID-19 pandemic. There are several ways for you to do that, including valleynewslive.com, our VNL News app, and also our Valley News Live Facebook page, all for free with no registration required. The Today Show and CBS This Morning, they're just about to start. But the Valley today, it continues on. We'll have more live up to the minute news and weather, including what we can expect on that first alert weather day for today coming up right after.